Well now, folks, it has been a very long time between videos, because life just gets in the way. Um, since the last time, I've uh, coated the, the coated all the parts with um, Alclad Aqua Gloss. Uh, in some cases, I've had to do them a few times, because uh, this piece uh, decided that while I was testing some wash using um, deep brown panel line wash by MIG Ammo, um, the enamel thinners, the Humbrol enamel thinners that I was using, uh, decided to eat through the gloss coat and uh, it just, it, uh, I ended up having to strip it and then repaint it. The other things I've done is I've been to Berlin. I went to to, to uh, I went to Tempelhof Air, Airport, which is very nice, very very interesting. I highly recommend going, especially if you like Cold War history. Um, what else? Oh yes, I've painted the 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 the, the tail wheel base. Uh, and when I repainted this, I also uh, lightened up some of the areas around um, around here, and just just in, in various areas to give a bit of a tonal difference. The most uh, noticeable is on this part, boop, um, where you can see that I lightened that up just in there a bit, get a bit of better lighting in there. There we go. It's been a while or so. So yeah, there's a bit more. Uh, tonal shading in there, there's a bit more uh, uh, stuff going on, a bit more life. What I'm going to do at this moment, while I have a five, uh, five minutes to myself, um, is I will start with applying some wash to the, to the cockpit. Now, I've already started with this piece here. Uh, it's always a bit hard to, hard to show off stuff in this light because it's just terrible but what i've done here is i've used a uh, panel line wash deep brown um this one to give these uh these these flanges and rivets rivet details a bit of depth a bit of a uh, bit of life uh i may thin it down a bit more uh, in places but i've got several other colors in uh, as well as some citadel wash case in point null oil which I'll be using on areas like like this the instrument panel or rather side consoles here uh, as well as oops, let's not drop things again as well as around here on the uh, on the throttle it's all very hard to, it's all, it's kind of misleading at the moment the way it looks because it's all glossy and shiny. As well as on here. Now I will use a grey, um, this one, on the cables in here as well. But for starters, I will start with the firewall. I'll just get some of these things out of the way so I don't destroy them in the process. So yes, Berlin. I really enjoyed going there. Uh, it was um, something my dad has been talking about for for years now. So he used to fly into there when he was when it was still a regular airport. He was flying for civilian aviation at the time. Passenger light jets and stuff. Uh, uh, not jets, he was flying Fokker 50s for KLM City Opera. So he always wanted to take us there. And he'd been talking about it for years and it finally, finally happened. So it was uh, it was really nice to do that. It was my, my, my dad, my brother and I. It was very interesting. We went to the um, hidden... We did. There's two tours you could do. And the one we did was the um, the hidden areas. And well, that where the, the where you go on that one is all the um, below ground stuff, the hidden stuff, such as um, the celluloid bunkers and the uh, old um, U.S. Air Force uh, command center. Um, 
So yeah, enough of that. I'm going to apply this wash to these areas here. It's going on a little bit, I won't say thick, but a little bit hefty. But what I'm going to do is once it's on, is I will blend it a bit with uh, enamel thinners or maybe uh, white spirits. Might be a bit more friendly. So give a bit of depth in here. So you can see some. You won't, you won't necessarily see any of these details because they're, they're really deeply buried within the cockpit, but uh, still it's nice to do. So that's that. The lighting is just terrible. Yeah. That's that. And I will do the same with the foot plates. Let's hold that there. So there's a little bit, there's some small river detail up top here. Just get the overall cover there. I said I will be blending this back. These aren't necessarily colors, but this, this just gives a um, general shading and grime uh, layer. I will apply some appropriate pigments as soon as the uh, matte coat is on. The pigments adhere to that a lot better than they do to um, uh, a gloss coat, because you can really grind them into the uh, into the into the surface right so now the seat there's also some nice rivet detail in here um, most of this is more of a it's a kind of a, almost like a shading pass Almost, because it's as I, I will be blending it as well, and hopefully not ruining it in the process. This stuff really does manipulate nicely. We're using um, thinners. And this is now also a 3D printed uh, backrest or seat rest, seat frame. Because I just, it was this little nagging feeling in the back of my head, like, my, you, you, are you really satisfied with that photo etch part? Um, it's, it's like, yeah, no, I'm fine. It's fine. It'll do. It'll do. It's fine. And then just one day, I was just looking at it, going, mm, not really. Let me show you the difference. See this, this is the frame that I made, the 3D printed. So the wash is a bit hefty on that at the moment. But it's got the correct brace at the top for the strap to go over. Um, the, the, the tube work is a lot more realistic or true to the real one. Whereas this, hang on. Well, that's just disappeared. Um, yeah, trust me, the, the photo itch part was just really thin and uh, not really worth it. It's nice that it was on there because it gives it a little bit more refinement over the kit part if you don't have uh, this sort of equipment to hand. So it's it's nice to be able to um, to do that so the, the the photo part is adequate enough but it's if you if you can 
replace it with something else, then, then do so. Um, there's some really nice resin seats out there as well. Yeah, so this is the part I ruined the other night. Or last night, in fact, I think. It's all a blur, people. Ooh, what's that? Big chunk of... Uh, what are you doing in there, you naughty thing? Big chunk of uh, pigment in there. Just want to... Yeah. Subtly put some wash in there. I'm going to paint the headrest later. There we go. It's a bit thinner this now. I didn't I haven't shaken the bottle. But I think I'll leave it like that. It's quite nice like this. I don't want it too prominent up here. A little bit more here. A bit more there. There, walk away. And then this piece. So these are just basic washes I'm putting on there. Let me just give this a shake. So once these are on, I'll blend them in and have another look and see if I'm happy with that. Um, might do a little bit of dry brushing. Might not. Depends on my mood. Uh, depends on whether or not I'm happy with what I'm seeing. It's going to be a bit more chunky. You barely see all this anyway. This is hidden under the seat. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but here, the oxygen hose and the regulator that I 3D printed, and it came out really nice. I mean, look at those lovely, lovely ribs in that hose. And do you know what you see of it? That. You don't see any of it, but I know it's there, and you know it's there, so it can be our little secret. wash on there It's hard to tell what's going on because the gloss coat is just obscuring a lot of uh, a lot of what's going on. That and I think I didn't even have that in frame for the last five minutes. So terrible at this. Yeah, and this is going to be an interesting one because there's this is a a joint. This will be lubricated and lubricated joints will catch grime because there there's always some grease floating around on the outside of it so that means that once once I've blended all this stuff I'll come in again with a darker color and just uh, mash that in there to make it look like it's been uh, sitting at the bottom of the aircraft catching all the dust that comes through and just uh, settling in on the uh, on the moving parts. Now this piece here will be sliding into the uh, into there. Come on, there more or less. Uh, straight, obviously. Okay, so I'm going to let this uh, let this dry for a bit, and then start working at it with some thinners. Um, actually, I'll let that work. In the meantime, I will use some uh, washes on the cockpit parts there. Now, what I could also do is instead of using um, black, just black, I could also go with a grey 
just to sort of bring out the uh, bring out the details that way, so, um, like you would with the underside of an aircraft, a black aircraft that is, because. Uh, I mean, I'll do it with this, and then see what happens. With, um, with this, I mean this. Stone grey for black. Uh, do I have one that's slightly lighter? I mean, darker? No. No, I do not. Oh, what do I have here? I do have streaking brushes, still. Warm, dirty grey. Might be an idea. Hmm. No. I will start with black, using null oil. And then take it from there. Because, uh. Hmm. Although, it might not be a bad idea to use a grey. I'm looking at it now. Because it does give a bit more of a dusty appearance. So, yeah, scratch that. I'll go with that. I'll go with the deep deep grey? Yes. Deep grey panel wash. <clears throat> as soon as that is on, I will call it a day for now, because <coughs> the boy has awoken and we'll be going out for some food. Let's see. So we're using deep grey panel line wash. Mm, that could work. It just gives it a nice sort of murky, dusty look. There's no shame in that. In fact, it might even be better than just black. Why oh, so black? Where I will use black, however, is in these recesses here for the levers. Yeah, that will need some manipulating later. God, is it? It's toasty here today. Not as toasty as it was in Berlin, though. That was really hot. A little bit in here. Yeah, arguably, this is a little bit on the thick side, but that's fine. We can work around this. Still not quite finished with that stuff. Let me just dilute it a little bit. Got some humble thin uh, enamel thinners. nice. It just gives a hint of depth. It doesn't have to doesn't always have to be dark and stark. I went to um, hang out with some friends at um, the local wargaming uh, shop. And, and it's a great place. It's Firestorm Games in Cardiff. I highly recommend going if you're into that sort of stuff. 
a huge selection of uh, of, uh, of games there, board games and um, uh, war games like Warhammer 40k and stuff like that. And uh, I was looking at some of the miniatures painted there, and they were all like there were some storm stormtroopers there that a uh, guy made, and a practice in um, war game or miniatures in general is that. You t you, they, they t uh, people can can use washes that are a little bit too dark. It's like um, when you dry bl uh, when you add washes to black or white white armor, you don't you I wouldn't go with black because it's a bit too too dark. I'll go with gray. Right, that's those. Oh, let's keep that on hand just in case. Then we're using more deep brown for the side walls. And I'll do the um, tail section as well at the same time. Do in the bottom of the cockpit is add dust as well. I'll use pigments for that again, as I said earlier, because it's areas. It's an area of the aircraft you you can't really get to all that easily. You'd have to completely strip out the cockpit and and the seats to get there. It's not an easy thing to do. And unless you don't have to do it. You won't. I'm thinning the wash just a little bit more here. Hmm. Found the uh, found the seat frame. So I'm I'm using slightly thinner wash here because it's so hard to get in here and scrub it back down with the um, with the enamel thinners later. that looking a bit grubby and grotty now I think that's all the parts so I've got some enamel thinners here and just before I go for this section I will work on I'll treat this piece here you can see I almost see that can we get some Um, 
fine. It's it's all a bit sort of lumpy in those areas, and it's on the on these raised parts here as well, on those ribs. Um, so I'm going to use enamel thinners to so just gently wipe it and blend it. Just sort of a little dab of that, and then just wipe off the excess. Too mad. I don't want to lift the paint like I did yesterday. Just want to make it blend a little bit more. Um, and remove it from areas where it shouldn't really be. The old movie model way of doing this is you slather the stuff, the slather the object in either black or dark brown paint, and just scrub it with a uh, with a with a cloth uh, doused in thinners. It's a very rough and dirty way of doing it. But you've got to remember that back in the day with miniature effects, the camera would um, and, the, and the lighting would hide about 25% of your work. So you have to uh, exaggerate it, which is why when you look at miniatures, movie miniatures, they are disappointingly badly painted, or they look disappointingly badly painted, when in actual fact that they're painted in such a way that they look awesome on camera. Um, I'm sure quite a few of you have seen the close-up pictures of the Millennium Falcon um, and the uh, almost brutal way it's been painted. But it works so well. Uh, it looks great on camera. And that's, that's, that's what it's for. Which is a tricky thing to replicate because when you're doing it on small scale, I had some black on there. I'll go in again with some grey. When doing it on a small scale, it uh, it's tricky to replicate to get that movie look right and then cross-reference it with um, the uh, with the studio model. Because you you want to you want to you want to have it look like what it looks like in the film in the film, but then you use the references of the studio model and you go, yeah, that's a bit uh, a bit coarse. So you've got to find yourself a nice happy medium where you can uh, you, can, you can get the techniques from the from the model builders but also get the look from it on screen. So it's just finding that happy balance. Yeah. Word of caution, speaking of sci-fi models, um, word of caution for those building Bandai kits, this new, the awesome Star Wars kits of theirs. Um, go easy on the enamel thinners. The plastic they make the stuff out of really, really doesn't like it and tends to dissolve and disintegrate. It's a little bit irritating. There we 
go. Lovely. Let's try that off a bit more. happy with that just just adds a little bit of ness if you know what I mean now the seat Let's see if we could not ruin this entirely Said this before and I'll say it again, other guys make this look so much easier. I always think I'm doing a good job and then I look at it when it's dry and I'm going, yeesh, that's just terrible. But by then there's like three coats of lacquer over it and can't be bothered anymore. Just chalk it up to experience, or a learning experience. So we're all learning here, kids. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but my boy has, has arisen. So I'll finish this off, and then cut the video for we have chicken fried chicken to go to I do like me a bit of fried chicken there's a there's a local food truck that sells it called dirty bird chicken they have the best marketing very lewd very childish right up my alley So, when, before I install the seat later, I will have to do the HGW belts, which are intensely fiddly, but intensely rewarding when you get them in, because they look exactly like real harnesses. And, uh, yeah, I don't do models without, any, without them these days. Keeping an eye on the camera, making sure everything's framed properly for a change. I have been known to not do that. That's not too bad. Tricky thing is getting these corners right. And this will edge of the seat so I just, just put plenty of this in there and see what happens there we go and then what how it dries it will dry naturally and hopefully leave a fairly natural looking um, rem remains of stuff there, there. And keep it in those tubes at the top, but out of the rest. There we go. Um. Yep, happy with that. Um, this bit. Actually, I'm pretty happy with the way this is uh, as is. So I will wipe some of that off there and leave it like that. Leave that one alone. I'm not ruining that one again. Uh, this bit. 
So it's mostly around the uh, consoles. Just want to push this around a bit. Leave that in between the the, the buttons there because it looks quite good. Dab dab dab. I do believe that grandma is being called downstairs, so I have a moment. Mm, we have done that, that, that. Uh, in. Let's put this in a little bit better. Well, it's tiniest, tiniest clothes bin. Or if you work in the, in the US uh, film industry, a tiny C-47, which to us modelers is something completely different. I don't know why they call them C-47s. There we go, just a hint of stuff. Ooh, there. I hope, I hope some of that was in frame. And cockpit sides. So I'm going to leave the, maybe just pull some of the stuff off the top there. Turn that down a bit on here. Blendy, blendy, blend, blend. Probably deserves some black around the uh, throttle because there's some, um, what's it, gaps in there. So, that's that. I'm going to leave some of the deeper recesses as they are. Around the, uh, the, the, the thing, because you just cannot get in there, which is why I went with a slightly thinner consistency wash. Most of this you won't see anyway, it's just there to give it a hint of detail. Probably benefit with a dry brush as well at some point. Benefit of? Benefit from? Benefit from a dry brush. Yeah. It was a, because I was in Germany, I'm, I'm bilingual. I speak Dutch as well as English. Uh, 
in the uh, equally shoddy way. That need a slightly thinner brush now. Um, I, obviously I'm really tired as always, and I um, I find myself switching between Dutch and English. Now also with a little smattering of German from time to time. So I'm just now struggling to find any of the right languages. And so what I'm doing is adding a little bit of black to the uh, throttle body at the top. So that can sink into the tracks that the, that the uh, levers run through. A little bit there. So I'm using the Nuln oil on this. A bit there. The lights. A little bit on the, um, the tracks here. For the uh, canopy rails. There's the canopy rail stop there. Boop, doop, doop, doop. There. Same on the other side. There's a few things over here that I need to do with that. So there's the again the canopy rail here. And black on metallic surfaces or aluminium surfaces works a bit better. Um that's that, and where else was I going to put this? Not on there. That's so that's fine. Um, I was going to put it on the hose, just there. That's all we need. Bit in there, bit on there, a little bit here. Right, uh, yeah, that's it. Happy with this. Um, I'll see if anything needs a dry brush later, after this is all cured and dried. And then I will hit it with some um, matte paint. Um, To seal it all. Actually, before we go, should I or should I not? No, that's fine. I'll leave it as is. Um, I was debating putting a grey wash on the hose, but it's because it's you know just to give it a bit more contrast with the the surrounding areas. But I'm I'm, I'm fine with this. So yeah, once that's on, dull coat, which will be. Vallejo acrylic mixed with thinners because this stuff this stuff on its own just turns into a it can go chalky so I will um, cut it with this 50-50 make it a lot easier to work with <clears throat> I almost forgot something the rudder pedals I uh, will use deep brown. So I did the lower half of them. I did not do the top half because there's a lot of lovely little whoop. Did a nice bit of rib detail on the pedals themselves. Focus, 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 focus. So this is going to go in here. Just help bring these out a bit more. And obviously there'll be a bit of a bit of a blending happening next, and then some dust on these things. Yeah, that'll do. Lovely. It, it may, it's mainly about the, the top parts there, so you can just see those that lovely rib detail. 
Cool. Well, that's that for now. <clears throat> I will um, make sure that uh, all, when this is all cured and dried and good to go, I will matte coat it. Then pigments, um, possibly with a dry brush here and there. And then that's that. And we can we can start moving on uh, with assembling it. Should be fun. Um, seeing I've assembled it so many times, it's uh, it'll be quite easy to do now. Yeah, that's that. So I'll keep this video as this. The next video will be the next stages. So yes, excellent. Thank you for watching.